everybody and uh, welcome to the first International Family Office Summit in India. Can you hear me? Uh, so the topic that's been given to me uh, is to talk about establishing a family office. Uh, but I'll go a little uh, sort of little back in, in, uh, in my discussion from, and I'll start from where Barbara left and really talking about the need for a family office. And does one really need a family office? Because I think one of the things that's become very fashionable is to talk about, I have a family office, or I do family office services. But it's very important to understand that as families, do the families need a family office? As advisors or people in the family office industry, whether it's something that you want to be in. Uh, so I'll just talk a little bit about that um, before I get into establishing and the different types of family office structures that families can look at. <coughs> So Barbara mentioned briefly this popular uh, proverb that is sort of the bedrock of what family offices talk about, and that's really shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations. Um, the research has said that almost 90% of the families lose their inheritance by the third generation, and about 70%. Okay, sorry. And 70% by the second generation. So the most important reason why families should be looking at setting up a family office is where they're looking beyond their current generation and where the wealth is of such size and nature that really discussions around uh, you know, keeping it, maintaining it, transferring it successfully and going beyond the third generation. So while making it as a, what a lot of families are doing today and are engaged in, and probably they're not the kind of people who really are looking at family offices. Really, the role of family office comes when we talk about things like maintaining that wealth, avoid losing it, not fighting over it, and transferring it effectively. And that's really the role where family offices have to come about and play. So as a concept, family offices started over 100 years ago, as Barbara mentioned, and as uh, also mentioned in his opening speech. The bedrock of family office, the concept really started in the US formalized structured family office systems. And it started with some of the first families, and often the names that are quoted are families like Rockefeller and Carnegie. And these are the first families that started really giving thought about you know, what is it about wealth? What does wealth mean to them? What kind of legacy do they want to leave? So when we talk about generational transfer of wealth, it's not just the financial wealth that a family is really concerned with. It's all of that that goes along with the social capital, the human capital, the values of the family. How do they, gen how do they ensure that generations after generations actually are involved in that kind of thought process? The, you know, and largely family offices as a concept have come about for three reasons. So one is when liquid assets have grown to a size where families are, in, are not able to manage it. Either there is a liquidity event, so families have suddenly sold a business and now have about 1,000 crores or 2,000 crores, and they really need effective management of that. Or where families have already tried managing it and have been un unsuccessful in doing so. And they feel the need to have a formalized structure for professionally managing that wealth and all that goes along with it. The core function of a family office is helping the families effectively transfer wealth across generations. So a lot of soft touch points is where family offices get, uh, get involved with. So while the core function of a family office still may be around asset allocation and, and investment management, but it is the soft things that differentiate that from a very, very good, effective investment manager. Because a lot of very, uh, private banks or wealth organizations do a fantastic job of asset allocation and maybe identifying the best in class products. But that's not really what a family office is meant to be doing. The family office is in, meant to be involved in other soft issues, and that's really where the concept becomes different from what large-scale wealth houses provide. So, you know, um, there's, been a, there, there's been a difference in model as how Asians have been uh, working in the family office setup, whereas, and how some of the Western counterparts work. So typically, what we've seen uh, in Asia and also in India is sort of a hybrid structure of family office. When you have the family, you have a trusted employee or a CIO or CFO, whatever they may, they may call it, who has been involved in the family's business affairs and is also therefore now involved in helping the family manage its, uh, its personal affairs. And often we found that families keep very little distinction between 
the family wealth and business wealth. And so one of the first discussions you start with the family is really helping them understand and appreciate what is family wealth and what is business wealth and how do they differentiate between family and business as two separate uh, groups that have two separate aspirations and needs. So currently this kind of structure is, is serviced by a whole host of ecosystem that are experts in their respective fields. So while they're all doing a fantastic job in their own respective areas of expertise, what happens is the holistic management of that is where the family suffers. Some of the motivations that have often been mentioned to us when we talk to families about you know, why they want to be in a family office setup or what is the reason for them to want to consider. And some of the things we've heard then is obviously they want to create an effective family governance structure, which is something that Barbara briefly mentioned about. They want to ensure that they minimize internal disputes and have an effective and efficient smooth transfer of wealth, professionalizing their family asset uh, management activities. The younger generation, the big trend we've been seeing is as the older, as the older generation starts giving out their passion to the younger generation, a lot of the younger generation has been educated overseas where they've been exposed to concepts like professional family office management and they are more eager to bring about a professionalization in the management. So we're seeing the younger generation far more proactive in accepting and embracing the concept of professional management of family affairs. And in some cases, it's a sheer prestige of having a family office structure because it also denotes a certain kind of wealth that the family has achieved. And so saying that I'm part of a family office also comes with certain prestige. But the diff big difference between some of the uh, structures and how we find family offices operating in the West versus how we see in markets like India or China, the newer wealth market, is that the monetization of wealth has just begun in countries here. So this concept is just starting to come about. We still have a lot of families where a large part of their wealth is tied to their businesses. And even today, when you talk to them, they say, look, our first preference is to our business. So every extra uh, whatever liquidity we have is going to go to our business. And if there's extra liquidity, we'll put in some basic secure investment. So that's, that sort of family office is still, that kind of structure is still away from actually having a formalized investment structure. Perhaps what they are looking for is creating the right structures for when the monetization takes place. And that's when you will see a lot of the investment management kind of activities will start uh, coming about. So largely speaking, there are three kinds of family office structures that, that, that exist and, and um, some of which we are seeing uh, now coming about in India. Um, one is a single family office, as we talked about it. Uh, it manages the affairs of one single family. So typically the structure we've seen in these kind of setups is that you have a very, very well-defined investment team. So you'll have someone who's heading the investment team and you'll have various asset class specialists who will be employed and hired by the family. And perhaps they will have an in-house tax and accounting. And that's largely the structure. So most of these single family offices are largely uh, focused on managing um, the investment portfolios. Now, if you look at the cost of setting up something like this, you know, you need a minimum of six to eight kind of professionals, at least six professionals to be staffed by a family. And historically, it's shown that the minimum net worth for setting up a single family office should be around 250 million and above. Because anything below that, really, either you're hiring substandard people who will not deliver the best value to you, or the cost